Well, hi there, Hokie fans. I'm Tech Sideline founder Will Stewart, and I'm your host for this edition of the Tech Sideline podcast, episode 238. Today, we're going to talk about Virginia Tech softball hosting an NCAA regional this weekend. Plus, we're going to discuss the unstoppable tsunami that is Virginia Tech baseball. Is all is coming up right now on the Tech Sideline podcast. Spring semester has ended and the chicks have flown the coop. That handsome young man, Jake Lyman, is left to go call baseball somewhere this summer, I think up in St. Cloud. And that attractive young lady, Katie Adams, is off to spend the summer with her sister in Chapel Hill. Um, so you're stuck with me, but uh, the good news is that this chair shows my good side. I've missed this chair. I used to sit in this chair all the time. Everybody listening on the podcast is going, what is he talking about? So, But enough about me. Let's talk about who we have here today on the podcast. Um, right across the way, I've got uh, Tech Sideline Managing Editor and budding TV star David Cunningham. If you were watching the baseball game last night in the ACC Network, David got some serious airtime in the uh, bottom of the seventh inning, right? Yeah, I don't. I got a text from multiple people. Uh, I It was... Uh, after Tech, Carson D. Martini Coach hit Carson a, D. Martini gets hit a, a double, double, knocks in and Jack Hurley Knocks in first. Jack Hurley, who walked to get on. And I had made a, a friendly $1 wager. So, so let me jump in here. I'm watching you on television. I'm like, that looks like a guy that just won a bet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. So I made, so my friends and I, we just kind of, we do like simple like $1 bets. Like, okay, I bet. You know, I bet you a dollar that Virginia Tech is is gonna get on base this inning, but not score something like that. Right. Um, and so I, at the beginning of the inning, I go, I bet you a dollar that Virginia Tech is gonna score a run this inning. He goes, I'll give I'll give you that on two for one odds. I'm like, okay. So Tech walks to get on, and then Carson Demartini hits him in. I stand up, I turn my hand, and I go, I'd like my two dollars, please. And of course, that's when the uh, ACC Network cameras. So you're like the only it. guy standing up. In, in that part of the crowd, so the camera comes yeah, in. Well, and oh, by the way, the Tech Sideline logo on your jacket was incredibly visible. So well, well <laughs> of, done. Of course. Yeah. Well, I guess that was like as soon as he hit it, because I saw, um, I forget who's the third base coach. You might be able to help me out. But he was. Yeah, Kurt Elvin. Yeah. He was waving Hurley home. And so I was like, I stood up before a lot of the other people. You're like, I'm getting, I was like, my I'm getting my $2. I'm getting my $2. Tech scoring right now. <laughs> so. it's, it's a sickness with you young guys. We'll talk about the gambling sickness some other time. But mm -hmm. but let's get around to introducing who else is here. In the Chris Coleman red shirt chair. You got to do this, Chip. Right. We've got the man working on the Santa Claus beard. Not so much. You look like you've cut it since the last time you were on it. But this this is in my script, so I have to read it. Okay. So, and our uh, resident Tech Sideline softball guru, Chip Grubb. So, Chip, welcome back. Glad so, to be for here. Your, for your second uh, appearance. Now, lurking over in the fourth chair, awaiting his chance, is the man who has seen, and we're going to have to ask you if, if, if you get this reference, the man who's seen more Virginia Tech baseball games than Chuck Hartman. Chris Hirons. I do understand the reference, but good to be here. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Great, man. So <laughs> it's a shorter list to tell us the games you've missed this year. Oh, boy. Um, so in person, I think I missed uh, – what did we do? We went down – me and David, we went down to Greensboro. I think I missed mm. the two Wright State games. Yeah, because we were covering the women's, the women's basketball, basketball tournament. tournament. Right, right. And then do we miss that entire Pitt series That was for um, – Oh, you were he, up, oh, up in New York? No, that was the uh, Georgia Tech series. Right, but you right, missed, right. Yeah, yeah. You missed the Pitt series because you were covering women's basketball in College Park. So wait a minute. Right. It's your fault Tech got swept against Georgia Tech because you guys weren't there? We were in Brooklyn at the... Oh, wow. It's were your there, yeah. fault. Yeah. Well, the trade-off was pretty good. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. We got tournament. to see Virginia Tech men's basketball win the AC right. tournament and cover yeah. it. So we'll get to the sports talk here in a minute, and that's why we got the experts here. I'm going to demonstrate my lack of knowledge about about the sports details throughout the rest of the podcast. But but first, we have to talk about the shirt. You like the shirt? That shirt, I do like. It's that. a very cool shirt. So if you're watching on video and you like this shirt, um, here's what you do. It's from Fanatics. It's a Coliseum brand. So you go to Tech Sideline, and over on the right, the menu says About. You hit that, and there is a Shop Fanatics. 
fanatics.com link. I think that's how I coded it. You hit that, that'll take you over to fanatics and you search on, let me read this. This is a mouthful. You don't have to search on all this. You just got to hit the right words. Virginia Tech Hokies Coliseum OHT Military Appreciation Raglan Zumi Polo. <sighs> so the OHT stands for Operation Hat Trick. I've worn their stuff on the podcast before. Um, if you buy an OHT piece of gear, and they've got a lot of it, and it's really cool gear, um, some of the proceeds from that go to support veterans and veterans causes and things like that. So um, last time I was wearing something, some OHT stuff on the podcast, and I pimped it. I checked the stats the next day, and we got a we got a little spike on our uh, Fanatics links. So, so without further ado, I can't think of anything else I need to ask to add except we do have some fun uh, new stuff on the podcast set we've got a couple basketballs and malcolm if you cut to over by david we're finally paying homage to the softball team a little bit so that's cool now come back to me and if you follow me on twitter you know the story behind this banner that's uh, hanging behind me over here i was in uh let's just say i was in a local establishment i won't embarrass them by saying which one they were and I was looking at this banner, and I noticed that it says, uh, you know, 2022 men's basketball champions, Virginia Tech Hokies. They left the G out. <laughs> so there's like 20 of these things on the rack, and I'm, and I'm looking at it. And I carried one over to the counter, and I said, uh, surely I'm not the first person to notice this. <laughs> and the reaction behind the counter was, <gasps> and they immediately went out and pulled them down and pulled them off the website. And uh, um, apparently this banner went out to – quite a few businesses got shipped to quite a few places. So um, that's not that. So, so I put that on Twitter and got a lot of traction. People were really rolling their eyes big time, but you know, David being in the business, you know, we can run content through three different people and it still goes out with typos in it. It's really remarkable. Yeah. So, um, so I just uh, wanted to touch on that a little bit. So let's get to the content. So chip, we're going to start with you. Uh, we're going to talk Virginia Tech softball. We are, of course, going to talk about the upcoming regional. But I want to talk about uh, Pittsburgh first, okay. um, going up there for the for the ACC championship. Um, I I thought it was a bummer, you know. I mean, it this this is arguably Virginia Tech's best softball team ever. Yep. You know, we'll, we'll get to some win totals soon. They're they're forty one and seven now that the ACC championship is over. And, and I know that Pete DeMoore said that the regular season championship is more important to him. Correct me if I'm wrong. He did say that. It's he more did. important to the team to to win a regular season championship than, than necessarily to win a single elimination tournament on days where anything can happen. That said, I really wanted Tech to win, not only for them to get the accomplishment – but I'm just a little sick and tired of Florida State and their, you know, we've won 17 out of the last 14 ACC championships, that sort of thing. So it was kind of a bummer to me. Uh, what was your take on it being there? Well, I certainly share the disappointment. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, well, there, there's a particular report of a local establishment that asked uh, Coach after the selection party. On local, local media outlet. Local media outlet, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Who sometimes likes to be Mr. Negativity. <clears throat> Excuse me. But he said, uh, Coach, you only scored three runs in Pittsburgh. Aren't you worried about slumping? And I thought Coach had the answer of the year. <clears throat> he said, well, if you, were, you do remember how many runs we scored in last year's ACC tournament? Of course, the reporter did not know. He said, we scored four. We then went to Arizona State and scored 14 nah. and swept the regional. Yep. <clears throat> Ended the discussion. Um, you know, in, in talking to the ladies after the selection show, they were all somewhat disappointed, but they weren't crushed because they have their eye on this week. And, and a couple of them made the comment about this is what we've played all year for. So, um, I, you know, I, I, I share your disappointment. I, didn't, yeah. I, I, I would certainly like to come back with a title. But I think in the overall scheme of things, we'll be fine. Um, I think they're uh, – I, I sent Coach a text early this morning, said they've had a good week of practice, and uh, I think they'll be ready to roll. Um, and, and the other thing I think about in situations like this is, you know, <clears throat> you and I are a little longer in the tooth than than the women who get that are, get out there on the field and play. And and for for the the athletes that are in the arena, there's only a limited number of chances at this. You know, 
it's uh, a lot of them are they're, they're going to play in three, four, five ACC tournaments. Right. You know, so really, you know, you and I are going to see ACC championships. They're going to happen. Sure. But you know, you always want the athletes that are actually there to win it because that's something you can never they they can never take away. Sure. From them. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things is as as in from reading what you have you know talked to the ladies about. It seems like they've really, you know, and Pete too, they've really taken a lot from last week. And I think that's the important part, learning learning from it, you know, because obviously, you know, Tech hosts a regional this week, and the goal isn't to go out in the regional or even the super regional. It's to go to the College World Series, Women's yeah. College World Series, and make something happen. And there have been so few bumps in the road this year for Virginia Tech. I don't want to say maybe it's a good thing, but like, I think there's a way where they can use it as a positive and use it as motivation. Now they know, you know, what it's like to not play well for a couple days and they know what it's like to lose. And, you know, yes, they've, you know, they only lost two ACC games all year. I think. And one of those. And and one of those was (laughs) was at home and and the other one was, you know, at Florida State. Um, So Tech hasn't really I don't want to say hasn't faced adversity, but there have been so few times that they've lost this year. I think they can swing it as a positive in a lot of ways and say, okay, we have to, we can learn and grow from this. Oh, I agree. I absolutely agree. And, you know, the last uh, regular season loss, I believe, was UVA. Yeah. And then they won the next 14, I believe it was. Yeah, that UVA uh, game was weird. They were just, there it, just wasn't right that Yeah, game. it was just a crazy day. UVA was throwing a pitcher who had like a seven ERA, right? Right. She'd only pitched like 10 innings. And, and Tech it was, was just weird. Tech was just bad that day, just fishing at everything. Yeah. That was really odd. Yeah. I, you know, Mira Slaw made, made the comment Sunday night. She said, you know, we just had a bad week hitting the ball. We're going to learn from it and we're going to move on and we're yeah. going to be fine. Yeah. And she said it with such conviction. It was like, yep, I'm going to have some of that. Uh, you know, that was just, uh, uh, I, I truly think they're going to be ready this week. Um, now, that being said, uh, and I'm probably jumping off sides here, Will, but this, <laughs> no, is, this, ahead, is, a pretty, this is a pretty tough region, regional. Uh, and and we, we will get to that soon. But I think before we want to dig into the regional, though, I, w- I want to put this season in perspective. 41 and 7 is pretty incredible. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and so I, I was digging through old schedules earlier today. And, and you know, so we, when you're 41 and seven, I think people's first inclination is to think, wow, that's got to be like a team record for victories. And, and remarkably, it's not. But only because of the cancellations. You well, know. it's not. It's not only that, but like in 1999, Tech went 54 and 16. They played 70 <laughs> games. <laughs> and I dug down into that schedule and there was a there were multiple days where they played three games in one day. Not not necessarily triple headers, not against the same team, but three games in one day. And there was one weekend where they played three games on a Saturday and two more on a Sunday. So I don't know what's up with that, but they used to do that sort of thing. And in the Tincture era, of course, they won a number of games in the high 40s. So you're right, there were some cancellations. So right off the top of your head, how many cancellations were there? I believe there were nine. Wow. And, and you know, several of those were... Games Tech probably would have won. Yeah, Games Tech would have won handily. I mean... I, you think a good example is before the Liberty game, the last game of the regular season, Radford. Right. The Radford game. That's a game that Tech is going to come out there and you would assume it's gonna smoke be ugly. them. It's yeah. going to be ugly. Rad- and, and so Radford's been ducking Tech in both softball yes. and baseball. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did, did Radford have one game scheduled with Tech this they year? They actually or? had two. They had one early in the year where um, the running joke was they got the, the sprinklers on and said their field was too wet to play. Right. Um so that was uh, that was canceled, and then they suddenly uh, discovered a week before the game in Blacksburg that was exam week, and we can't play mm-hmm. seriously. Um, so, mm-hmm. and then and then you had uh, Norfolk State had a double hitter scheduled here. Uh, they canceled it because of COVID, but played the very next night at JMU, and then the next night after that up at Marshall. So <laughs> that's really interesting. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, so. Th- there have just been. And, and I think it may, you know, given on what Coach Demore is doing, I think it may be more and more difficult get get teams to come to Blacksburg, given the level of talent in that Virginia Tech dugout. Yeah, yeah, and, and there's something that's related that we'll talk about in baseball with Kansas State coming all the way to Blacksburg to, yeah. to play last night. But, um, it, it, well, the, the the positive side of it is that you're talking about teams that if Tech had played them would have hurt their RPI. Yes, they would have won big time. Big yeah, time. Yeah. So I got no complaints. So where where is Tech in the RPI right now? They're number three. 
Number so three. they're three three in the RPI. They're three in the coaches poll. Uh, three is a good number. You know, I, they uh, before the bids came out, there was some debate would Tech fall as far as four with Arkansas jumping us, and then that's the one thing I didn't want. Two or three really doesn't matter. Four um, potentially, if you make it to Oklahoma City, you get a matchup in the second round in Oklahoma City against Oklahoma. Yeah, and let's face it, Oklahoma is a juggernaut. They can be beat. Oklahoma's probably the best. Oklahoma's the best team in the country. They are. Yeah. yeah so if you're, like if you're a wrestling fan at all, uh, Oklahoma softball is like Penn State wrestling. Yes. It's there's a big difference between number one and number two in this yes. sport, which which is a shame but, because because Virginia Tech is an excellent softball. Yeah. Team. But to your point, if Virginia Tech now as a number three seed would get to play number two seed potentially in Oklahoma City, p- potentially correct. Better, so, which is much, which is much more favorable than having to play number one Oklahoma potentially. Yeah, so so when you go to Oklahoma City, assuming we get there, that's a big assumption. But you have two pods of four. Yeah. So you have one four, what's that? Seven eight maybe or or one four five eight in one pod and two three six seven in the other pod. They basically do a double elimination to get to one winner of each pod, yeah. then those two teams play a best two out of three. Best of three. So if Oklahoma's in the other pod, i.e. number yeah. one, and Tech's number three, you won't theoretically see them see until, them until the, the national championship. So yeah. I asked a question about RPI, and I, th- I think we segued into national seed. Tech is the number three national seed. Correct. Yeah. And is that seeding... I guess they're reseeded for the Women's College World Series, depending upon what eight no, teams make it. No, they're actually not. So that so, seed so th- actually goes right through. Okay, right. So, so if one and two make it, both of them, and even, even if even if like number two gets knocked out, Tech becomes the de facto number two seed. No, they'll still be the number three. So 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 it is a legitimate sixty four team bracket. Yeah. That leads to Oklahoma City. So if somebody were to upset. Number two, using your example, they basically they, fall they all the take, way to the They take spot. that, yeah. They would take. So it's like spot. somebody's coming out of the Tallahassee Regional, right? Like and it, and Florida State wound up number two seed. Right? Yeah, right. yeah. Did. So it, it's a team that it'd be the team that's coming out of the Tallahassee Super Regional and the team that's coming out of the Blacksburg Super Regional, and I mean w- one through sixteen. Yeah, correct. Okay, all right. So glad we got a, got that all settled and. <laughs> Too bad we didn't have graphics ready. So let's launch into previewing the regional. So tell us who's in the regional. Let me see if I can remember off the top of my head. Kentucky, Miami of Ohio, and St. Francis. You're right. in here with Tech. So Very good. So give us the rundown. You've done all your research, right? Well, uh, we have. We have. And it will be probably published, be published tomorrow. Published tomorrow morning. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, Tech opens play with St. Francis. They're the number four seed in the regional. And that is – that's – 2 p.m. Friday, 2 p.m. Friday. 2 p.m. On Friday. Friday on the ACC Network. That's correct. That's correct. So St. Francis was uh, 37 and 16. They were the winner for I think the fourth year in a row of the Northeast Conference. Um, and what is uh, they've actually they're on a 10 game win streak, hmm. and uh, so they're you know they're they're a good team. If 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 you want to be critical, their uh, RPI. Strength of schedule is number 280. And that's that, that just means their level of competition isn't uh, isn't great. They only played seven teams in the top 100. They went 0 7 against them. Mm-hmm. So um, they've got some excellent stats. If, if you want to be somewhat critical of them, it's just the fact the quality of the competition right. wasn't great. Um, so there's that many softball teams? There's 312, I want to say. Probably close to. Basketball, yeah, basketball, something like three hundred and fifty Division One A teams, yeah. and, and that's I, I would not have guessed that. That's pretty huge. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, sorry to interrupt. No, so they, you know, they, they, they've got uh, um, a, a couple of dynamic players. I mean, if you look, if you look, just look at their numbers. I mean, their team batting average is three hundred. They uh, they average five runs a game. Um, you know, they're they're a good quality team, and Tech's got to be ready to play at this level. You know, anything can happen. You're exactly right. Yeah. So you got to be ready. You got to go out there. You got to take care of business. So have you asked Pete Demore? Um, you know, like in, in the past, there'd be no question that Keeley's pitching. Um, would Coach Demore pitch Emma Lemley in this game? I have not asked that question, and, and honestly, he wouldn't answer it if I did. Um, you know, I think the, the, the two schools of thought are: you know, you don't want to take anything for granted, and you want to get in that. You want to stay in that winner's bracket. 
Yeah. Um, at the same time, I will tell you the key, the really big game, the huge game, is that winner's bracket game on Saturday yeah. that is set for 3 o'clock. Um, let's make an assumption just for a minute that Virginia Tech gets there. If you win that game, you're done. Take the rest of the day off. Right go, on. go, whatever, sunbathe, whatever you want to do. You're not playing again until Sunday at noon. But if you lose that winner's bracket game, you have to play again at 8 You have to play at 8 o'clock. And I got to tell you, there's no way that game's going to start at 8 o'clock. It's going to be closer to 9 o'clock. They've got two and a half hours between the games. That's just not going to happen. So that game's probably not going to start till 9 o'clock. It, the game will be over almost midnight. By the time they do all their stuff, the post-game interviews, everything else, they'll probably get to their rooms at 1 a.m., and they've got to be ready to play at noon the next day. And we're not even mentioning something we haven't talked about yet. It is going to be shockingly hot this weekend. Yes. Like high 80s. Right. I don't know where that's coming from. It, it was just, uh, it was just what, what, a weekend or two ago that everybody was all bundled up in, <laughs> yeah. in TSP, right? Right. Um, so, so that's another thing. If you have to be out there basically all day long in that kind of heat, that's going to take its toll. Sure. High of, high of 91 on Friday. That's insane. Where's that coming from? I, I don't know because it's funny because you, lo- you look at like next week, like next Monday, it's supposed to be a high of 68. Wow. So after after being in after being ninety high of ninety one, high of eighty nine, high of eighty four, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, it's high of sixty high of sixty eight. Oh, wow. It's gonna be interesting to see if that's a record high for this area. Eh, mid May. I don't know. We'll see. But but so so to your point, Will, and it's a very good point, do you consider running Emma out there and save Keeley for that winners game, which is huge. Yeah. And and honestly, I don't know what he's gonna be thinking. Um I, I would ask you who you think is pitching better right now, but I know you're not going to answer that question. Um, well, okay. but 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 let's 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 go there just a minute um, because I know uh, candidly, Keeley's had some struggles here the last two or three outings, and and I tweeted about it after two innings <laughs> in uh, at in the, the at pitch, the ACC in the, in the Syracuse game. I I compiled the numbers and she had given up a run an inning for like eleven innings. Right. And then so, she threw what like six scoreless innings or five she scoreless did. She innings. She threw five scoreless yeah. innings. She saw it. She went she, she saw, saw the tweet in the dugout. To the dugout. <laughs> But, but I, I still thought she was kind of off. There were a lot of balls in the dirt I'm not used to seeing, you know. But anyway, go ahead and finish your thought. Well, so so uh, the one game that stands out to me, and I, it got a lot of traction on the message board, was that Liberty game, in which Liberty actually lit her up pretty good. Yeah. But I would say, and this is Chip's opinion, and 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 I may be in left field, but if you were at that game, you know the game was ready to start. They had played the national anthem. Right. Everybody had warmed up. Everybody's ready. Keeley's about to take the mound, and lo and behold, lightning is detected in the area. Everything's on hold, and there was an hour and 20-minute delay. I've got to think that affected her. Uh, um, and, and she's not one to make excuses, but I've got to think that really affected she's her. She's always the same no matter what's she going is. on. She always she looks kind of mad. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, you know, I discount that game a little bit. You know, and then Syracuse, she was not sharp to your point, but – Let's think about this a minute. She pitched a complete seven inning game and she gave up one run. I know. What are you complaining so, about? Like that's that, <laughs> it's funny because that's really, really good. But to but to Keeley standards, and this kind of goes, it's funny, this kind of goes to well, we talked about a thing last time we did a podcast where with both softball and baseball, we've become so accustomed, especially with softball. The word is jaded. Yes. We become we become so used to Virginia Tech softball just you know, shutting out an opponent like that, sure. just not giving up anything, and just to, to see Keeley give up a home run in the first inning, and then essentially not allow anything the rest of the game. It's like, why did she give up a home run? <laughs> you know, and that's that's a good outing. And I also think that you know, for those of us that have been around longer than ten days, um, you know, I, st- I still think we've got this vision in our mind of, of Angela Tincher, who was who was a robot. Always good, always awesome, and, and about one of the top five pitchers in NCAA history. Sure. Keeley's good, but to hold somebody to that standard is is not fair. You know. Well, and 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 honestly, uh, along the way, Angela had a bad outing or two. We just don't remember that. Time is kind of <laughs> time has pushed those to the side. Angela's awesome. 
She's one of the best that ever, ever wear a tech uniform. Got to get her on the podcast. We ought to do that. Yeah. We ought to do that. But uh, so I think the recency effects hurts Keely just a little bit. Yeah, but I, yeah. I, I, you know, she's a competitor and she will be ready to go. So the other thing you're leaving out, it's not like Liberty's a bad team either. That's right. Yeah. You know, they're, I think they're RPI 39. They won a lot of games. Yeah. So. That, and, and, and heaven, you know, they're, they're in the Duke region. Um, and, you know, they beat Duke once already. So yeah. the Blue Devils have got, Liberty is not a three seed, and they went to that region as a three seed. So the Blue Devils have got their hands full, and I really think Dot Richardson might have thought they were coming here because if you look at who she threw that game, she threw her number four and five pitchers a long time that game mm-hmm. against us. And, you know, just in talking among some friends about that, it was like, you know, she thinks she's coming back here for the regionals, and she doesn't want to tip her hand. And that very well may be it. I mean, she's a she's a smart lady, a uh, really, really good coach. So, uh, Well, historically, they have made decisions on regionals based on geography. That and, is a thing. And, right? and that is the number two thing on, on regional assignment. And so I'm, uh, so I'm setting up the segue. You see it coming? I'm yep, I do. Kentucky. Yes. Right? So there was some commentary that Virginia Tech's region is one of the toughest and that in – and that's pointing the finger at Kentucky in particular, that they're a really good team to be yeah. coming in here. So go ahead and, and dig into the other two teams, Kentucky and Miami of Ohio. Well, let me just talk about regional assignment just a minute. Go for it. All right. Um, you know, in basketball, it's a nice, clean process. Yeah. They go out and they seed 1 to 64. I guess they seed 1 to 68, but let's just, for the sake of argument, right. say 1 to 64. And they assign teams, and boom, it's done. Yeah. Well, in softball, their, their first – deal is seed the first 16 teams regardless of geography. Get one through 16 right. That is basically what you've got to do. Then the next step is, okay, pick out the 16 teams in no order whatsoever, but the 16 teams that you think should be the number two seeds. Then go to geography okay. and try to keep as many teams as close to 500 <clears throat> miles or 400 miles, I'm sorry. 400 miles as you can and assign those teams to those regions. And the only rule is no conference team yeah. goes to the same region. So the, I was listening to a podcast with the chair of the NCAA selection committee. And she said, we have begged the NCAA to let us seed one through 32 and not worry about travel costs so that we can provide fairer regions out there. Yeah. Um, so, Kentucky's probably, you know, their RPI was um, 24. So they were probably, you know, they were, they were right in the middle of the number two seeds. You know, you would think normally if you're a three seed, you're going to get the number, do that math, David, the number. 29th? Uh, yeah, 29th. Third, there you 29th go. Thank you. The 30th, oh, yeah. 30th, actually. The, the 30th yeah. best team. Probably, yeah. And obviously that's subjective. So it's not like it's a huge thing. It's not. It's yeah. not. But yeah. at the same time, you, you also have got – you. so you've got Kentucky as a number two. You've got Miami of Ohio, who is a very, very good number three. Yeah. Um, so it's a tough region, but that's okay. I mean, yeah. if, if you're going to make it to Oklahoma City, you got to beat the teams that you go up against. Yeah. So – it yeah. is what it well, is. And, and Virginia Tech is very familiar with Kentucky. Just they are. Not even mentioning yeah, that, so that they the already beat them of, this season, right. but but just they've played in Kentucky. They played in Kentucky's regional multiple times in the last, I think, tw- two or three times in the last ten years. I mean, this is a um, one, one of the last times Virginia Tech. I, I don't. You can remind me of the year, but I don't. It was. It would have been three years ago they played there. Right? Was it Pete's first year? It was Pete's first year. First year, and yeah. Tech lost to Kentucky. Yes. To, yes. That would have gone to the super regional. Yes, and 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 you know I think at that point Pete and some of the uh, some of the ladies on the team have all talked about that was one of those wow we're in the regional type reactions at the time. Yeah, and they learned from that and they got better and now it's like you know I, I was talking to Kelsey Bennett about it. I said what do you do with these freshmen? You got some freshmen out here first time and she said I just tell them this is what you've lived your entire life to do. You get a chance to play in the NCAA's. It's still a round ball. It's still the game you've played for 18 years. It's the old measure in the hoop and who's yours. Right? Yes, it's exactly. Yeah. Go out there and have fun. But this is the first time Kentucky has. Uh, this is their 13th consecutive bid, and it's the first time since 2015 they're not hosting. Yeah. So they are which very, is surprising because Tech's played in Lexington multiple times. Yes, they have. 
Now, have. now you've probably been to you've been to games in Lexington, I have. Lexington right? What, what kind of crowd are they used to? They're a pretty good sized crowd. Yeah. They, they, they've got well, that's SEC. Yeah, yeah I was going to say you got to think they're playing in the SEC every single week, so they're seeing good crowds as well. Plus, they're right yes. they're they're in Lexington, you know. Which yes. Is, yeah, and and, they, and, they, and their ballpark setup is just beautiful. It was designed very, very smartly. You've got the softball field, which backs up against the soccer field, which backs up against a third field. It may be baseball, but they almost share the concession stands and they share the ticket entrance, and they is very uh, financially smart. So let's, since you brought it up, I was thinking while you were talking that with that, you know, let's let's diverge from talking about the teams a little bit to talking about the setup. Uh, TSP typically only holds about a thousand fans, and to host a regional, you got a seat fifteen hundred. I think fifteen hundred is the minimal. So it's not that Tech wants to add seats temporarily; they have to for the right. regional, and that's been done. So uh, so you've seen it. So go over the seating that's been added. And for people who've never been to a game and might be coming in, tell them how concessions work and that sort of thing. Well, you know, I, the Tech is actually going to do a nice job with this. They're going to have almost a party-like atmosphere. They're going to block off Beamer Way. Mm-hmm. They're going to bring in food trucks wow. and park them on Beamer Way. And it's going to be a festival-type atmosphere. So that, that should be That's really, be fun. really fun. Yeah. It should be a lot of fun. Um, you know, so you're adding you're adding seats down the left third, field line, third baseline, third right. baseline, and boy, you look at the pitchers; those fan, those seats are like vertical. Yeah, I mean, they I, are I, straight up. I said the picture you, the picture you sent me that when we put it in, in his article, I saw that, and I was like, because because the uh, the the bullpen is kind of like right there, oh, right it's underneath a tech that bullpen. Bit. So you're kind of like staring right down into the bullpen. Yeah. yeah, those seats are up in the air. I was over they're there taking way pictures, and they're higher than the regular stands. Yes, right? they are. Yeah. So, you know, that's general admission. Then there is some general admission. So the reserve seats are in like the three sections in the middle. Right. And then down the first base, the regular down the first baseline seats and down the third baseline, third baseline seats are general admission. Right. If you've got any sort of problem with vertigo or heights, you probably want to try to get there early and get along the first and third base lines. So they're also doing two sets outside the left field fence. Left field. Yes. And it looks to me like, and Will, I've not been by there the last few days, but it looked to me like those left field stands are almost in play. Uh, I mean, they're really close to close, the fence. Yeah. I actually made the comment to Kelsey Brown at the selection party, and I said, Kelsey, do I need to come out to practice and heckle you this week? I said, because you're going to have people in your back pocket. Right. And she right. said, oh, Clemson's, Clemson has hardened me for everything. Apparently really? she, had, she had her own fan club at Clemson. That were not, they, were not, they were not obnoxious, but they were telling her how pretty she was and uh, <laughs> just tried to, trying to distract her. Is that really what they were saying? They were, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. She is. Yeah. Yes. Is that really but, what but they were I, saying? But, it, but to, to the – the general point, it's going to be a really fun atmosphere. I think it's going to be great. I think it is going to be, and, and you know that uh, somebody said this on the message board, you know, there, there are certain NCAA regulations that you have to make it quasi neutral. So you can't play inner Sandman. You can't play the walk up songs. Um, you got to be Bailey angle is going to be uh, apparently the in, the in, uh, in venue host in venue host. And he was like, I've got to be right down the middle, uh, you know. So everything's got to be like quasi neutral. So it's up to the tech fans. I'm just telling you, tech fans, Hokie Nation, we need to bring it, uh, and we need to be loud. And uh, the ladies, I'm telling you, they are excited about it because they've been at Alabama with 3,000 people yelling against them, and you know, at South Carolina, and they are excited. Um, Keeley said, "Man, I cannot wait to see Tech Softball Park." Filled to the brim, and we've had capacity crowds. Yeah. So, so this is such an interesting topic because um, being a you know in air quotes a cold weather team, we we've talked how much they time they spend on the road. They really don't play in TSP a whole lot. No, they don't. And so I wanted to ask you, you know, being around them, you've seen the early season games where there were three hundred people there, and you've seen the series where that place is filled with a thousand people. Um, in in your estimation, what does it do? Like some teams, when there are that many fans there and they're not used to that, they get a little tense. Um, some of them, it inspires them to play better. What's your take on that, having watched them all year? Well, I, I, the, the, the great example, and Coach DeMore has used this, um, we're playing Alabama. So they're the number two team in the country. Top of the first, we load the bases, none out. Somebody hits a scorching line drive down the third baseline, and the 
the third baseman grabs it, doubles the runner off third, and Bama gets out of the inning with us not scoring. That place is going crazy. It's like Lane Stadium in the old days on a Thursday night. Yes. The place is going crazy. Emma Limley walks out there, and, and I remember thinking I was in the press box, but I remember thinking, all right, welcome to college, young lady. Let's see what you got. And she was like, boom, boom, boom. I think she struck out the side. Wow. And the place was going bananas. And it was like, she's for real. you know. And it was just kind of neat to see that. So <laughs> Tech has certainly experienced it. Um, I, you know, but but not really at home. Not at home. I mean, and, and people and, cheering against you. Yeah, I, I think there have been really good crowds at home this year. We've seen a lot of, I, didn't, I mean, a lot of really good pictures of just the place well, being the, the packed. The UNC series, I think the weather was really good. The UVA so series, that, the spring game weekend, the UVA yes, series. Yeah. But now you add close to what a thousand more seats. Sure, and, and I'm sure there'll be people standing out in the street. Yes, I mean that's true. It'll be, of course, their view will be blocked. Yeah, by the temporary stands. It'll, but it'll out. be. I'm, it'll, I'm, I'm interested to see how big the crowd is going to be. And of course, I think this is kind of a conversation that we've had before. Um, but when you ho- when you ha- have the opportunity to host something like this, an event like this, it brings in a, some people you might not normally get. Like, like I think, um, I believe we talked about this on the last podcast, but bringing in like some donors. You know, bringing in or potential donors, I should say, you know, bringing in people that haven't ever maybe been to a tech softball game before and that are like, OK, you know, I'm going to donate some money to the sure. to the program. Sure. I, I think there are so many positives to hosting a regional, potentially a super regional as sure. well. This is something Virginia Tech's never experienced before. Yes, no, I, I think it's going to be neat. And, and, and something that Coach DeMore is doing that I think is uh, is also interesting is he's going to take a, a page out of the football handbook in that this weekend he's going to take the ladies off off campus to a hotel and they're going to treat it like an away game, a business trip. Yeah. And I was actually walking out of uh, the uh, the selection show with, with Darby Troll and Mackenzie Lauder, two of our, you know, obviously veterans. Yeah. And they were, I think it was Darby that just said, I said, so how do you feel about that? Because he actually asked the ladies, what do you want to do? You want to do it? And they were like all over it. Yes. We want to do it. It's a business trip. It gives us structure. We know what we're doing. There's no distractions. Yes, we want to do it. And and, and I thought it was interesting that he asked their opinion first, and then when they said they wanted to do it, uh, I think it was Darby that just said, um, she said, I love waking up in a hotel room. My day is structured. I get on the bus, and when we get to the ballpark, it's showtime. Yeah. And it's like, you know, what a great mentality. Yeah. And, and, Instead of waking up in your apartment, you know, and I mean, of course, I'm sure they're not going to be very far away. Right. I'm but, sure, right. But, but I mean, it's a lot different than waking up in your apartment. Well, the other thing happens seeing when you other do people, it, like they're talking about, they, they all get there at the same time as opposed to trickling in. Yeah, that's yeah. and that's what I was thinking, too. You know, it's like waking up, you got to drive yourself over to the ballpark. You know, you got to you got to park and it's like, right. You know, this is everything's taken care for you. You got to wake up and just lock in. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, I think that's quite frankly, I think it's brilliant on his part. Yeah. Uh, All right. So, uh, very important question. I know the answer to it, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Do they sell beer at TSP? They certainly do. They sell beer. They so, certainly do. So be careful. We just said it's going to be high eighties. You know? <laughs> so get your water. Get your beer. You know, if, if that's if that's how you roll. Um, yeah. So uh, what else do we need to say about the teams? Like, like give us a quick rundown. We've talked about Kentucky. Uh, in a- yeah, so, so, so Kentucky, 37-17. Um, and 17, um, they, uh, they are a team that hits the ball really well. They were 332 as a team, which was second in the SEC last year, or second in the SEC this year. Last year they were first in the SEC. So they've got a history of really, really good hitters. Uh, their leadoff hitter – um, is uh, Kayla Kowalik, I think, and I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering that. But she hit 413 this season, five year starter, and her career batting average is 418. Wow, wow. <laughs> and her on base percentage is 0. 0.492. That means she gets on one out of every two times. I uh, mean, where, she, where does she bat in the lineup? Lead off. She's, She's lead off. Okay. Wow. She bats lead off. So is she, does she hit for power at all? No, not particularly. Right. She's only had like twenty home runs. Uh, but you look at their if you look at their lineup, you know she, she leads off. The second girl hits four twelve. She started over four hundred games at Kentucky, so a lot of experience there. Um, their home run hitter bats third. 
Uh, she's hit 17 home runs this year, but she's hitting 412. So she can hit for average as well. So, so we're up to three 400 plus hitters. Yes. And then their, their cleanup batter is second. She's only, she's only hit 13 home runs. Um, but, uh, she, she's hitting 331. So okay. they are a very strong hitting team. Now, what is interesting is their pitching staff. Their, their ERA is 367, which is relatively high. And they've, the last 12 games, they've given up 72 runs. Six, so, six per game. Six per game. Wow. Um, so they've got seven pitchers on the staff. Um, and they've only got 15 complete games. So they change pitchers a lot. Okay. And it's, I mean, I went back trying to figure out who was even going to start against Tech, and I had a hard time doing that because this one girl, Stephanie Schroner, 6 and 4, 5.31 ERA, um, she's got 14 starts, and seven of those have happened in the last 18 games. So I think she will get one of the starts. Um, the other one uh, uh, may be Miranda Stoddard, who's 5 and 4, 3.80. Um, she started 12 games this year, including against Tech. Uh, but she also plays third base. So so it'll be a lot of different faces. It will that, be for that Kentucky. We'll see. They, yeah. they, 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 they pitch by committee. Um, and again, I, you know, I don't want to jinx us here, but that whole team ERA of 367 would seem to indicate that they're hittable. So yeah. put that in context for us. Like, do you know off the top of your head what Florida State's team ERA is? What they, well, well, Texas 193. Yes. I, I, think, I think Florida State's is probably somewhere like 1.8. 1.8. Right. Yeah, um, right. Okay. So if you're under two, you're really good. Um, and the other, the uh, so Kentucky's 367. Miami of Ohio is 362. Okay. So, again, Te- they're, they sh- they, in theory, they're teams that are hittable. Yes. Yes. It, it, it's an opportunity for the bats to wake yeah. up. Yes. From their- I, think, I think assuming Tech and Kentucky meet in that 3 p.m. game on Saturday, that'll be interesting because it'll be – Two veteran squads, you know, both have really good hitters. I think it'll be really interesting to see what happens with with Tech and, you know, if Kentucky is kind of rotating through the pitchers, you know, because because in softball you can take somebody out and then put them back in. You can do that with your starter. With your starter, only that's your what, starter. That's what I meant. Only yeah. So so I mean. Just it'll be interesting just to see absolutely what what Kentucky does to mess with with Tech, but. Um, but yeah, it's. I mean, and Miami of Ohio is no slouch. Well, either. I was going to say, do not count out Miami of Ohio. Um, they they uh, actually have played really well. As I said, they started out a little rough. They were uh, four and ten to begin the season, and, and Tech got them during that period of time. Since then, they've gone thirty five and five. True. So they're playing really well. Um, believe it or not, they are third in the country in home runs per game. They average two home runs a game. They're only behind Oklahoma and Wichita State. So, so they, listening to all this, that's that's why people say this is a really tough region. It is. It know? is because the names might not jump off the charts necessarily, but all of them, all of them can hit the ball well. Absolutely, right? I, and, and again, they've got a team batting average of three ten, but they're averaging two home runs a game. Yeah, I mean, think about that a minute. That that's uh, and and you look at their lineup. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six players hitting three hundred five or better, and five of them have hit nine home runs or more. Five of them. Well, that you know, that'll get you two per game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's and, let's and do the math. <laughs> this 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 Carrie Spade has hit twenty seven. Um, let's see here, and she has got uh, uh, she's second in the nation second in the nation at point four nine home runs per game. And that's she probably averages, behind whoever it is from Oklahoma that, sure. that hits one. Like, Josh every Josh other Allo. Bad, whatever her name is. <laughs> but but think about it, averaging a, a half of a home run a game. <laughs> Wow, you know that's, that's that, that that's pretty remarkable. Now, one of the names on their on their team is Kate Kobayashi. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. Kate played for us. Uh, actually, I believe she was in Kentucky um, yeah. for the regional. Um, just lovely, just a really nice young lady. Um, I remember distinctly a game at North Florida where she hit a ball off the very top of the wall and it came back, and we were we kind of went, man, she's snake bit. She can't hit one out. And, and I think she kind of saw a little bit of the writing on the wall in terms of Tech's outfield, which is very, very, very good. Wanted to go somewhere she could play. And so she's there. She's hitting 333, has hit 12 home runs, and is 16 for 17 in stolen bases. So I, 
I, I would say she's an example of the transfer portal working exactly the way it should. So she probably played for Pete that first year. She did right? first year yeah. with Pete. Yeah, I was yeah. going to ask how many, how many of because this is a very experienced Tech team. I'm sure a lot of these, the a lot of the players played against Kentucky. Yes, that first year. Yes, so they they probably remember oh, that I'm weekend. Sure. I'm All right. sure. All right. And and, 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 and and speaking of playing against players, what I found very interesting in in in, in seeing the team. Uh, at various venues is that whole travel ball circuit is a tight knit group. So like Kegel played travel ball with a number of our players and they, they know each other. And so they're, is Kegel from Virginia? She is from Yorktown. Okay. We're She's talking about with her. Valerie Kegel from uh, Clemson. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The one that beat us last week. She's, she's, she's eliminated us the last two ACC tournaments. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it is tech, what it is. Tech did sweep her in the regular season. We did. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Yeah. 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 So listen, I would love to keep talking about this, but I looked at my watch and we're almost an hour in. Well, oh wow! Yeah, and we still so. got to talk about some the baseball and team. We have that's baseball, also right? Yeah. yeah so the other, the baseball. other number three team in the country. Yes. Can so, you believe we have two number three teams in the country? It 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 defies like it go it goes in my brain <laughs> and it just does what I call a touch and go. You know when you skip rocks on on a, on a lake, how it goes pink. It just it doesn't make it doesn't make sense. It's it's, it's awesome. <laughs> But it's kind of hard to, to, to truly fathom. Um, so we're going to take our break, and uh, we're going to swap out Chris Hirons for Chip Grubb. Awesome. And uh, we'll talk baseball when we come back.
All right, Hokies, welcome back into episode 238 of the Tech Sideline Podcast. Great job by Chip in the first half. He was so engrossing that that the time went by. But yeah, people tell me all the time, don't worry about it. You know, just don't worry about how long your podcasts are. Let it rip. So, uh, and I have been listening to a lot of Joe Rogan lately, which is, you know, two and a half hours of pop. And, uh, and that guy doesn't take a break. So anyway, we're moving on to baseball now. We've got Tech Sideline baseball beat writer Chris Hirons in the uh, red shirt chair. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and uh, Chris, Chris is, uh, <laughs> don't get mad at me, all right? Is this your first year covering for us or second year? First year covering for you guys. I think I did a little bit for 3304 Sports right. last year. Yeah. Did you play baseball in high school? Yeah, I did. Um, ever since I was five years old. Chip. Um, <laughs> I was trying to get questions for you. <laughs> yeah, I played since I was five and then quit in high school. I was recruited by through a few D3 schools, but I realized, you know, I didn't really, really want to play further, so... Yeah, so, so, so our that. previous writer was uh, Corey Van Dyke, yeah. and Corey also played in high school. Yeah. Chris so covered we, women's basketball for us, too. Yes, yeah. abs- this, this guy works hard. Um, <laughs> and and we, we we pay you okay. We do all right, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That's nice. We, we nice. appreciate the effort. And, and I'm glad that you're still around for... Um, for the for the regional, you're going to be here when Tech hosts a regional, right? Yeah, I'll be here for the and hopefully a super regional and a super host, regional uh, for the regional, the super regional. I'll just go back and forth. I have an internship with the summer baseball team up in DC, but I'll drive back and forth uh, to Fredericksburg and here for the two regionals. Mental note: pay him more money for gas. <laughs> um, all right, what kind of truck? What kind of vehicle you do you drive? Chevy Cruze, so it's pretty yeah, fuel so efficient. You, yeah, it's you're really, really like nice. Forty miles to the gallon. I yeah. love it because in high school I drove this like 2001 Ford Taurus. It was a a station wagon, <laughs> so you know I, I got made fun of in high school for it, but you know now got a little nicer car. I owned a '94 Ford Taurus <laughs> once. I like it, but anyway, we're wasting time. Let's get to talking about baseball now that we've established your credentials. So uh, before we talk about the actual baseball, I'm sorry, but we have to talk about rally boobs. <laughs> oh boy, I didn't even know what happened. Uh, well, I wasn't. Of course you know so that. Chris was there. there. So, the so here's part. a funny thing. So I was out at this was Saturday. This was this past Saturday. I was back home visiting my family. Uh, it was my brother. He's a senior in high school. He's coming to Tech. It was his prom night. So. My parents and my sister and I, we all went out to dinner and I checked my phone during dinner and I'm get like, I just like have this, these texts that are just like, like what is going <laughs> on? And Chris is there. Chris is in at English field in the press box covering the game. But of course he's not watching on TV. Right. And, uh, and I sent it to him after the game because I got home and I was like, what in the world is going on? I sent it to him. He goes, what the heck happened? And how did I miss this? <laughs> so for those, like if you've been living under a rock and you don't know what rally boobs are, um, when Tech was playing Liberty, not about a week ago, right? Uh, it, was, uh, it was a midweek it was It was last Wednesday night. Yeah, so Wednesday. Kansas State happened last night, so I think a week ago. So it was on the ACC network, and, and Liberty was winning. Was, was it one nothing going into the bottom of the ninth? Yeah, Tech was down one nothing, and they they came back and walked it off. But so 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 this game's on the ACC network, yeah. and uh, as they come back from commercial to show the bottom of the ninth, they show the crowd shot, and a girl momentarily lifts her shirt <laughs> and flashes the crowd and right back down. It was instantaneous, but. You know, everything lives forever on the internet. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway. Yeah. yeah, there was a big, uh, what was it, No Context College Baseball, which has a ton of following. They, uh, they, they posted on their site, but, or their Twitter page, and it was, but they obviously blocked it out with two uh, No Context College Baseball logos. But right, right. I thought that was the funniest part. Yeah. Well, now there, there are versions on Twitter that are not censored. Yeah. Um, so, you know. If that's how but, you oh, roll, but, but you're, you're missing the best part. Virginia Tech down one nothing at that point, scored two runs and walked it off. That's right. Um, so she did that, bef- and and to my to my knowledge, the girl has not been ID'd by anybody right. but her friends, and I'm sure they sit around and laugh about it. Um, this was before the it was before the bottom of the ninth even started. Yeah, right. Yes, yep. it, it was coming back from break, middle like middle of the ninth. Yeah. So Tech did everything with two outs, right? Didn't they have two outs and basically nobody on? Um, no, they had one out. Tanner Schobel got hit by a pitch. Right. I think he warded off the elbow, and I think Jack Hurley struck out. And then Eduardo Malinowski singles through the right side because I think he was hitting the five hole. Oh, um, Tanner Schobel got to second during Hurley's at bat in a pass ball. Yeah. So then Malinowski ties it. 
um, with a single to the right side. Shoba comes around and scores. Um, and I think, and this with two outs. And then um, Kate Hunter, I think, singled. Um, I forget who was hitting behind him that day, but it, but they got on somehow. And then D Martini. D Martini. No, D Martini hit ninth that day. So yeah. So D Martini didn't hit. Um, oh, it was Christian Martin. Christian Martin walked. Yeah. He drew. He drew this big walk. He was up three on the count. Um, the pitcher battled back three two, and then Christian Martin drew a walk. And then you know Lucas Donlin, who's you know probably as good of a guy as anyone, um, been in the program for three years. He, whenever he's in the lineup, he hits. But he just you know when you have a lineup as stacked as Tech is. You know, he's not in the lineup every day, but he, he got his shot and then he walked it off um, with the bases loaded and two outs and the game was tied. So if, if you listen to the podcast, you know that I enjoy beating Liberty. It's it's not <laughs> that I enjoy beating Liberty. It's that I hate losing to Liberty. I don't know. I've got this thing where I don't take sh- tech should ever lose. So I enjoyed seeing that. So um, first thing we have to do is establish my credentials for baseball, which are almost non-existent. And I'll try not to waste too much time with this. I'm a guy who, when I watch a tech baseball game, I don't really watch it. I mean, since you cover it, you're there watching all nine innings. I'm the guy who'll put it on DVR and hit fast forward. And when I start seeing runners in the little graphic be on base, I'll stop and watch some. So I kind of speed watch games and I don't really retain stuff very well. So here's what I'm about to do. I'm about to name as many tech baseball players as I can. And I'm pretty sure I can't get all nine. And then I'll try to guess how many of them play what positions. And yes, we're going to waste time with this because I know probably a lot of people listening are really into tech baseball. No, I know the ins and outs. But at this point, there may be other people who will think this is funny. So here we go. The <laughs> Friday pitcher is Griffin Green, right? Mm-hmm. Saturday pitcher is uh, Drew Hackenberg. Correct. I don't know who do they have a Sunday pitcher at this point? Jordan, they do. Jordan. They do now. Jordan Geber. Uh, they struggled for the first uh, probably half half the season. They threw Ryan Okuda out, who's been here for five years, and then they went uh, Henry White. Uh, yeah, Weicker got a start, um, but he he got aside from that, he's been great all year. And but he got shelled in that start, and then Geber was given the um, Sunday start in the Miami game. Pitched three innings of two-run ball. He was pretty good. I think the first two innings he shut him out and then got tagged for a two-run double. Um, and then since then, he, he pitched well. What was the series after Miami? Was that NC State? Yeah. He's pitched well since that UVA series. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah. he's been doing well. Yeah. So do you th- you and think- he's got an interesting story, too. Yeah, yeah. So Chris actually has a feature. Are you Here's a tangent it? within a tangent. Yeah, I was going to say, are you, <laughs> are you, are you, I, we haven't talked about this. Are you, I assume you're going to get it this to me yeah, yeah. I'll today or this, tomorrow. Yeah, this story. So Jordan Geber has a, a really cool story. I, you, I'll let you tell it. Yeah, so Geber, it'll be a feature story up on Tech Sideline uh, later this week. Um, but he, so he was a four-year starter at Mount St. Mary. Um, and then he transfers to Tech as a grad student um, in the fall. And then he's coming back from campus, or he's coming back to campus, I take that back. Um, and he's driving in Northern Virginia uh, the day that the team has to report, I think January 9th. And then he gets in this car accident, really, really sad. He, gets con- uh, he got a concussion. Um, he was at home for the first uh, three, four weeks of the semester. And then he finally comes back and doesn't start throwing the ball until – Maybe two or three weeks before the. Are, are we talking January 2022? Yeah, January yeah, 2022. Like this is, this yeah, is like so this past is this semester. Months. Yeah. Okay. Um, so he he comes back late January, early February. Doesn't get on the mound. Um, doesn't even throw a pitch in practice until maybe like a week or two before the season. And then he, you know, gets on the mound in that first series, which is what, February 19th to the 21st. That, so, yeah. I mean, he was, he hadn't pitched in since. You know the team had left for the, in, in the, the fall, fall semester, yeah. right? And then he gets on the mound, kind of gets. I think he got. I think he gave up a few walks. Got a got hit around a little bit um, coming out of the bullpen in that first series. And then you know, Chef, all head coach John Chef was you know trying to work him back all season. Um, gave him a few um, appearances at the bullpen, and then finally they they went with the start um, against Miami. But yeah, he hadn't he hadn't thrown a pitch since the fall. Got on the mounds, um, and now he's essentially now, Tech Sunday yeah. starter. And now wow. he's been really, really, really good. Yeah. Seven innings of a uh, shutout ball, one hit ball the la- the past week or so. so. And that's critical to making it through the ACC championship mm-hmm. and making it through regionals. You got You got to have more than two guys. Yeah. If, if you want to go very deep, so let's see. Can you name more than two guys? <clears throat> All right. So the catcher I know is Cade Hunter. Yep. 
un- unlike the Syracuse announcer who called him Hunter Cade. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. That, that was okay. that. Well, sorry, Syracuse. <laughs> and that. No, Syracuse announcers are way better than that. It should not be. <laughs> Cade Hunter. So <clears throat> let me name some infielders. Uh, Schobel. Yep. What position? I think Schobel plays short. Yep. Yes. Right? Does Jack Hurley play first? No. no. Oh, he's in, he's in the he's outfield. He's in the outfield. But. Okay, so Hurley's in the outfield. Uh, so now I'm just going to start naming names. <laughs> <laughs> Is it uh, Christian Martin? Is yep. he a regular starter? Um, mm, depends. No. Midweek guy. He, he did start last depends. night. Depends. Yeah, he did play last night. All right. So let's go to Carson Demartini yep. then. Is he yes. the third baseman? Yep, third yes. baseman. All right, so I've got short and third. Mm, now I'm running dry. Uh, I know that Nick Bittison plays center field, right? Right field. He right plays, field. He plays right, but occasionally first. Did they first. have him in center last night? Yes. They had him in center last night. They had him night. in center last night. He See. occasionally plays first, too. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay. I'm missing the big name. Well, Gavin Cross. Okay. Um, but I honestly don't know if Gavin Cross is an outfielder or an infielder. He plays center, center field. Center field. So you got Bittison and ordinarily right, mm-hmm. Cross and center. I've got short and so Hurley is in left, left field? Yeah. Left. Okay. So now you're just missing first and second. I'm missing first and second. And uh, I'm not going to prolong this, so fill it in for me. <laughs> second base, uh, Eduardo Malinowski. Right. And then first base, Nick Halise at the beginning of the year, but Lucas Donlin, his bat has come alive, so he's been getting stars lately. And these are names you just mentioned yep. while you were talking that, that I should have should have retained. Yeah. So. But that's not, I mean, for somebody who <clears throat> fast forwards through most of the games, it's not, <laughs> that's not, not bad, bad that you know most of the names. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do this again with the softball teams. See how many softball names you can name. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, I'm resisting the urge to go on the tangent. We'll save, we'll save that for the future because I have the same issue. Yeah, um, uh, I kind of recognize the names and I even recognize the faces, but I couldn't tell you where everybody plays in softball necessarily. So, so that's all about um, <coughs> establishing my credentials, and, and this is why we have the experts here. So, um, I, w- I want to start by talking about last night's game against Kansas State because I mean it's kind of a throwaway midweek game, but I thought it was interesting. Because Kansas State is coached by Pete Hughes, who coached Virginia Tech from 06 through 2013. And did you guys get a chance to read the article that Mark Berman wrote yeah. where he called Pete, up, Pete Hughes up and interviewed him? Um, very good article, very gracious. Uh, a lot of good comments by Pete Hughes. Uh, and I always tell people this all the time. I remember how I feel about something. I don't remember the specifics. I just remember thinking he was very gracious. Do you guys remember some of the stuff he said in that article? Yeah, well, I, well, I thought one of the things that was interesting, because remember, he was at Boston College and then came to Virginia Tech. Yes. And then when you know he took Virginia Tech to the last ever regional that Tech went to in 2013. And Tech hosted. Uh, and Tech hosted. And Tech, you know this is the best tech baseball team since then, you know? So I think a little irony there. Um, I thought the, the one of the most interesting parts I thought was what he mentioned about Oklahoma, because that's where he went afterwards. What did he say? He, he said that his kids contract ran up at Oklahoma and Joe Castiglione, the Oklahoma athletic director didn't want to pay him more. And so he essentially just did. They never renewed the contract and he got fired. Yeah. And then, so he's been at Kansas state since, Yeah, but so, so going back to that regional, I did a little research on this. Um, so that was prior to uh, English Fields renovation yes. and, and expansion. Yep. And and I remembered I remembered being disappointed in the attendance when Tech hosted that regional in 2013. So I went back and I did the research, and Tech there were 3,600 fans yeah. at the Friday game, and Tech lost it. That was UConn to UConn, and that's the one that's the one that Chris Coleman has referenced many many times about how this is. The, the last time Tech really had a big crowd at a regional game. Yes. And so the next day, I don't, I don't remember who they played. It's not important. There were 1,800 fans at the game the next day, and Tech won, I believe, to advance to Sunday. And they played two games on Sunday, and there were 1,200 fans at each of those games. And, and it's a softball, excuse me, baseball regional, and there's 1,200 fans there. And one of the teams there was Oklahoma, and Oklahoma hired Pete Hughes away. Yeah. The and other I, one was UConn. And UConn and then somebody else. And I, I, I've I, always felt this has never been backed up by quotes or anything like that, that, that Pete used was just like, really? We've got a really good team. We're hosting a regional and this is it? Yeah. You know, and, and that was – and I'm sure Oklahoma paid him a lot more too. They probably paid him half a million when he was mm-hmm. making about 250 k here. But all that said, his comments were very gracious. He loved Blacksburg and – he said he's not the least bit surprised that, that Tech is doing this well. So 
So the other thing I wanted to kind of that that game was that was a lot of fun to watch. Um, those midweek games are interesting because I think your average super casual fan doesn't realize that that those aren't your front line pitchers, you know, and you're even subbing some hitters and moving guys around and and they're crap shoots. And uh, you know, uh, it's weird because Kansas State came here to to fortify their RPI. And then put a guy out there who wasn't that great and got shelled, <laughs> and they lost eight to two. So, what did you think about last night's game, Chris? Yeah, I mean, the well, you had Matthew Cyberling. He uh, he made his season debut last night. Uh, pitched the first inning. Yeah. Um, he was active on Sunday. He underwent surgery on his left arm. He's a lefty, um, or his left shoulder over the off season. Um, and so, he, for the first time all season, he was active on Sunday. He was throwing in the bullpen, um, but he didn't ultimately get didn't in. Come in. Um, and then they gave him the start yesterday just to get him some work before the Duke series and the ACC series. So, like 13 pitches, right? So yeah, he hit the first batter, and then I think he, and then he got, and then he got two strikeouts. Yeah, he, and then he got two he got strikeouts ball in the inning. inning. But so, pretty quick work. So yeah. he's or, and here's more ignorance. He's ordinarily a reliever. Yeah, he's yeah. primarily primarily a reliever. He was. Uh, I think he was pretty much Chef's go-to lefty last year out of the bullpen, yeah. um, if I remember back correctly. He, he's very talented. He's been in the program for a long time. Yeah. And so this is just a guy. This is a guy who Tech basically been missing all. all That's year. one of the lost subtleties. They're having a great year without a guy they thought they were really going to count. Yeah. Him. I mean, yeah. when he comes back, obviously Tech has got some other really good relievers. But if he can get back to his his good form, I, you know, he's that's another weapon for Tech going down the stretch. Yeah. Yeah. And and the batter started teeing off, but yeah. so let's talk about was it is uh, is Metz's first name Ryan? Yeah, Ryan Metz. He um, um, he came in and did really well. Yeah, no, I mean he's he's been really really good at the bullpen. Um, Chef has mainly used him in midweek games. He's seen some ACC action, but he's really kind of they they've really used uh, they used Ryan Kennedy as the the starter in midweek games before. Um, Ryan Okuda might have started midweek game, but. Um, but Ryan Metz is the guy that's come in and really, really thrown the ball well out of the bullpen in those midweek games. He's given you, you know, two, three, four innings. I think he was like four and a third, four and a third, night. four and two thirds last night. Um, he was really, really good. But the bats you mentioned, I mean, they finally, they weren't, they hadn't died. They were in the past you know, few weeks. They, they've hit the ball hard. It's just been right at somebody. Right at people. Yeah. So the, <laughs> it was, it was good to see tech at, you know, hit some home runs over the wall last night. I mean, they had been really, really missing that. Um, especially I think over, over the, the weekend against Louisville that they, there was no real big home run aside from Gavin crosses two that right. kind of put tech out in front. But you know, the past few weekends they've been missing that long ball, but I think they finally got it back last night and, you know, they, look, they looked really, really good. Uh, who was it? Jack Hurley hit a home run. Uh, Carson Martini. he he flipped the bat. Oh, he and, knew, that, uh, he and, knew that was going. Was he the one who hit it over the trees out there? Yeah. And, and Carson Jones. Car yeah, Carson Jones. His, his Carson first Jones. Jones. Yeah, no, that was, first that was home awesome. Run is the see. only second start, too, in 10 appearances. So it's like eight runs, three home runs, and there were a lot of warning track shots last yeah, night. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, what was it? Malinowski almost hit a home run right after Jack Hurley did. And then it was... D Martini after his home run, I think Bittis and Smoke went off the wall too. Yeah. So I mean they almost hit five home runs last night, but you know, yeah. the two they but the two that smacked off the wall, you yeah. know, turned into two doubles. Yeah. So they had five fun game, doubles. you know, fun game, yeah. never in doubt. It was a fun I tell you what, as somebody who was there, it was a very fun atmosphere. Right. And and there have been so many times this year, kind of like what we were talking about with Chip, uh Tech, both at Tech Softball Park and at English Field, it's been cold. Like you're bringing your blankets and stuff. Yesterday was beautiful. It was it was perfect. Even when the sun went down, you know, it was low seventies. You can sit out there in in shorts and a t shirt and be comfortable, not feel like you're you're shivering. And there was a really good crowd there for a, a Tuesday. You know, midweek game, mid Tuesday With midweek students game. Students not in town. Yeah, it, well, and so, you know, I think there are a lot of students that are still here. Like, they yeah. just, like, haven't moved, you know, people, the kids living off campus that haven't moved out or anywhere yet that are just like, I've got nothing to do. Let me go to a Tuesday midweek baseball game. And, you know, it's free for everybody because it's a non-conference game. But right. it was a, I thought it was a really good crowd, and everybody stayed for almost, I, I think people started leaving in, in like, the 7th, but people stayed for a really long time. So it was well, good. the game wasn't really in doubt, you know, and that's yeah. probably why people left early. So so that was fun. Let's go back to the series against Louisville. 
Now, there was a little bit of a misrepresentation going on with Louisville. Tech hasn't beaten Louisville since 1995. Well, that's a whopping six games, you know, because they, they were in the Metro together back in the day. And I looked it up. The last time they played Louisville in the Metro, I think it was at Louisville, and Tech took two out of three. Mm. And then they got swept by them twice once ACC play started. So they'd lost six in a row to them. And, you know, old school Tech fans love beating Louisville in anything. Um, so, you know, Griff- Griffin Green did well Friday night, but, you know, they, 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 they lost eight to one. Um, then one, one Saturday and Sunday. So to you, Chris, what was the story of the weekend against Louisville to you? To me, I think we go back to Jordan Gieber. I mean, they needed, they needed a Sunday start. They needed a good Sunday start. Um, you know, at the beginning of the year, they had won. The, all their series were, you know, pretty much a Friday night win and then a Saturday night win. They did it, you know, Miami, NC State, UVA. The, I don't know, UVA, take that back. They lost that Saturday game. Um, but, you know, they really needed that good and that solid Sunday start from um, Jordan Gieber to really limit the, Louisville va- limit the Louisville bats because, you know, Louisville actually um, – is probably I think they're the number one like offense. Um, once you get to the in the country, in, no, uh, in the number one offense, ACC. no, they're actually middle of the pack. But once you get to the eighth inning, they oh, are the best late, offense. Oh, late in the games. So they well. so late in games, they their offense finishes, um, and so they really really needed um, that shutdown start and to get out ahead, which is exactly what they did. Um, when Gavin Cross hit the home run at the in the bottom of the fourth, uh, Gieber though gave him four shutout innings and. I think he had worked t- 20 straight outs without giving up a hit going back to that Liberty start because wow. he faced the minimum uh, against Liberty in three innings. And then I want to say it was two with two outs in the third, he gives up this double, and that was the only hit he gave up all week, and he yeah. was named ACC Pitcher of the Week for that. Yeah, right, right. W- which is very impressive. I think the, I think the thing outside of Gieber that, that, is impre- that impressed me most of the Louisville series is just that Virginia Tech continues to like some some guy continues to step up. It whether it's we know how good Gavin Cross is, mm-hmm. but he had two two run homers, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. Mm-hmm. I mean, those were big hits. But like Carson D. Martini coming up with huge hits late. I mean, I think that that's what you have to do. Goes same thing goes for softball too. When you get into these the regionals, the super regionals, even the college world series, you have to find Guys have to give you something constantly, and it can't always be, you know, the top of the lineup. It can't always be, you know, a specific guy. And I think that aspect of of it, and it goes for pitching too. Like Jordan Gieber, you know, Henry Weicker comes in and, and throws pretty well. I don't remember what day he threw this weekend, but um, but a lot of the relievers that Tech has brought in, they've done well too. So it's kind of just you're not necessarily. It's not all one guy giving you something. It's everybody is is contributing and i think that is like that's how you win deep into the season yeah and, and uh, i think chef said that on the podcast yeah. that you guys were on he, he said well it's always somebody different doing yeah. something you yeah know? his his big word or his buzzword is contributors you know yeah. uh, there's one quote he had where his big contributors coming to the season what he thought they've been awesome but he's gotten con- contributions from pretty much everyone in the lineup i mean you go back to lucas domlin who's you know the eight hole hitter um he's he's hit pretty well um, Eduardo Malinowski, a big contributor. Um, Cade Hunter, who, you know, had the broken handmate bone last year, um, played only 18, 19 games, but he and hit like 179. Yeah. He's you know, has, has kind of a kind very of, well yeah, for a catcher. Had, had kind of a, you know, a bum summer, was in and out of the lineup up in the Cape, and then comes in this year and he was hitting over 400 halfway through the year. So that's, that's Chef's biggest bu- buzzword, especially from the bullpen, you know, contributors. So let's uh, <clears throat> let's throw some stats out there. Uh, uh, Twenty-seven and five in their last thirty-two games, right? Yep, that, right. that's that's incredible. Um, Twenty-six and five at home. So they're thirty-seven and eleven overall. Now I was looking at this in, in preparing. That's so that's a winning percentage of seven seven point seven seven zero eight. Um, the Yankees are the best team in the major leagues right now. They're they're uh, seven fifty, right? So then I drilled down in the ACC. Tech is 16-9 and nine in the ACC, and that's a winning percentage of .64. That would lead half the divisions in the major leagues, that winning percentage, and only three teams have a better winning percentage than that. Um, I don't really have a point here. I was just looking stuff up. <laughs> it just it, But it, I think it just goes to show you how 
how well Tech has performed all year. I mean, they've won eight straight ACC series now too, and that yeah, is the huge. ACC network said seven, but it's really eight, eight if you count it, the one count, counting Notre the, the one game against Notre Dame, which yeah. of course they couldn't finish out the series because of snow. But 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 how Tech has done it has been so interesting because, like Chris said, at the beginning of the ACC season, after the Georgia Tech game, of course, they lost that Friday game against Pitt, but then came back and won those two, and then pretty much from every series, kind of up until like the UVA game, UVA was the one. They have one on that Friday and yeah, Saturday. Yeah, they won on Friday, won on Saturday. So essentially it was they didn't have a Sunday guy yet. And so essentially it was, all right, well, we won Friday, Saturday. You know, we've already got the series one. They go into UVA, they lose on Saturday. Yeah. And then they had to they had to win that that Sunday game. So, so now you're starting to see the Sunday guys come alive. Where before, you know, Friday, Saturday was good. You're questioning Sunday. Because I remember talking to, when we talked to Coach Chef, that was kind of the thing. It was, you know, What's going on on Sundays? You know, have you have you felt comfortable yet? And now Tex won on multiple Sundays in a row. Well, I remember that UVA series. I, I was with some buddies at the beach, and when they lost Saturday, I thought, "Oh man, I really don't want to lose this series to UVA." So that was big. Yeah. You know, is it overly dramatic to say that was a turning point for Sundays? Um, no, because Gieber he got shelled. You know, he said he was he was dealing with a cold. Um, and he actually hit the um, him and Hackenberg were dealing with colds that weekend, so Gieber didn't really have a feel for his fastball. But you know, you kind of got that contribution from Henry Weicker. Henry Weicker. Yeah. Um, you know, he goes four and two thirds out of the bullpen, something yeah, like that. Yeah, because I was gonna say because uh, uh, Gieber only came in through I think an inning, if that. Yeah, he threw an he threw an inning and then couldn't get couldn't get it out in the second. That's and, right. And we're still talking the Sunday game against yep, UVA. against UVA. Yeah. And then yeah. Weicker came in and cruised for about four innings. Yeah, four so innings, and then Graham Fairved um, got the last nine outs, something like nine, ten yeah. outs, ten outs. Um, but yeah, what is it a turning point for the Sunday? I don't know because I think I really think I go back to that Miami that Miami series that Sunday start with. Yeah. Even though they lost that game, you know they kind of battled, but Gieber turned in a really really solid start. You know, he goes three innings of two-run ball, doesn't get hit around until about that third inning, and then he comes out. You know, and then I think from there, Chef was like, okay, you know, maybe I do have a Sunday guy. Yeah. You know, maybe I really have a strong a, a guy who can come in and can start on Sundays. And then, you know, he's turned around. He's turned that around. It was Miami series. I forget which series was after. Oh, the Boston College series. Yeah, uh, up which, in, which up Tech swept. Yeah, which Tech swept. Because Gieber gave, I think, four and a third that inning, or that day, too. Um, and then I think it was one or two runs he allowed. Um, but I, I go back to that Miami game and yeah. that, that Boston College game where Gieber started. Well, and that, then, that seemed to be the, the Miami series seemed to be the one that kind of got Jordan Gieber. I don't say like on the map, but I mean that's kind of like like that's the one that kind of I guess gave Chef confidence that he could succeed on Sundays. Well, I, I think as a as as an observer, you know, they were picked last in the Coastal mm -hmm. and they, and they were having a good year. And then to do that to the number two team in the country on a weekend, that's when I started thinking, I think these guys in, in a three-game series can beat anybody. Yeah, and that's yeah. what they've been you know, steadily doing since then. Yeah, well, and you gotta, you got to think. They've won eight straight AC series. Six of them have been against top 25 teams. Yeah. yeah. Like, like they're, not, they're not, you know, rolling over. And they got Duke this weekend, and Duke's at the bottom of the, the coastal. Well, i got some stats about Duke. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> my, my point is that they're rolling over good teams. Is that a spider hanging? It is a, it is a spider <laughs> hanging. I wasn't going to distract, but. So, um, I, so I got a couple things left I want to talk about. Um, and I think, I think we tried to, I think we asked Chef this, and he basically said we're getting contributions from everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you guys, what is it that makes this team so much better than people expected? I think one of the easy answers is Drew Hackenberg. Drew's in high school last year. Mm. And, and so, like, of course, you picked Tech last in the Coastal. You don't know he's going to come in and be as good as he is. So what are, what are some of the other things that make them better than people expect? I think, I think it's the fact they've been healthy all year. Um, you, go back, you go back to last year, uh, Anthony Simonelli, who got drafted, he was a starting right. pitcher. You know, he was in and out. Chris Gerard strained his groin, um, also another starting pitcher. So you had kind of guys that were – guys in the bullpen that were kind of making spot starts all over the year. So that was, that was part of it. Um, but I think I think it's really the fact that they've been healthy this year. Uh, you go back to Cade Hunter's uh, broken handmade bone and his I think it was his catching hand. Um, he 
you know, he only hit 179, but, you know, he's back fully healthy. And all these guys, yeah. you know, Griffin Green has started every Friday night for you. Drew Hackenberg has shoved every single Saturday. Yeah. Um, to me, you know, it's really, it's really been healthy, um, or it's been the health of the lineup because I don't, I can't, I can't name you the last time a starting player got injured. Maybe a Gavin so that's Cross. A, that's a knock on wood situation. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember yeah. thinking about this during basketball season thing. Tech's basketball team was putting the same lineup out there every, every single, single game. night. And it builds it, it builds consistency. Yeah. And I think to go along with that, the biggest thing outside of that for me would just be, well, I think the first thing is, and I was talking with this, about this with some friends last night. Last year's Virginia Tech team, it was eight freshmen and then Tanner Thomas. Tech was so young. Everybody was either a COVID freshman or a redshirt freshman or a true freshman. This year, everybody's got another year under their belt. Yeah. So everybody's got another year of experience. And to go along with that, now you've found some consistent pitching. You've got a good Friday starter. you got a good Saturday starter. I mean, Anthony Simonelli last year was great on Saturdays. But it was essentially, you know, especially once we got once Tech got deep into the season, the bats weren't as consistent. And then you were kind of tossing up who was going to be able to go on, you know, throughout the week yeah. between Gerard and Alfred and whoever. You got consistent pitching this year, and the bat. I mean, the bats. I think everybody has kind of taken a step forward. And the defense has gotten a lot better. We talked yeah. about that. We that too. On. They're top ten in fielding percentage in the country. And they weren't last year, weren't they? Seventy something last year. They, yeah. It was. It wasn't pretty on defense yeah. last year. Um, you know, they would they would make you know kind of some weird errors or some mental mistakes. But you know, this year the defense has really really turned a corner. Uh, Carson DiMartini at, at third. At third yeah. He's he's a shortstop playing third base. I mean, the, some of the plays he makes are, you know, you wouldn't see that. Kevin, you go back to Kevin Madden last year at third base. He, you know, he was he was a solid fielder, but he he's not making the same plays Carson Demartini makes. Right, right. Tanner yeah. Strobel has really improved as short as a shortstop. His his arm is strong. And then Eduardo Malinowski, him at second. I mean, anything hit up the middle that you know t they have a chance at him and him uh, Malinowski and Strobel, that ball is getting scooped up. Yeah. And the the defense is just so good, and then when Nick Halisa comes on at first, uh, late in games to play um, defense, because that's really because he's kind of more of a defensive specialist now. Um, it's uh, he makes he makes his other like on a bad throw, he makes his other his infielders look good. Yeah, and then in the outfield, I mean, you you shift Jack Hurley, who's you know he played center last year. He's really a center fielder playing left field. He's got a center fielder arm, right fielder arm playing left field. He's thrown three, four guys out of the plate this year. Um, he's done a solid job. Gavin Cross is a solid, um, not a solid, a very good um, collegiate uh, center fielder. And then Nick Bittison. At right. He, yeah. he, he makes some plays. You're like, how in the world did he get to that? Wow. Like, how did he run that baseball down? So I think – I think the defense also has been really, really improved, and that's really, really what keeps runs off the boards. Because that's Chef talks about that a lot. You know, you you can measure someone's offensive numbers pretty easily, but it's hard to measure how you, their impact defensively. Yeah. yeah, all they count are the errors. Yeah, you know, a guy yeah. can make a great play, and it, and and it doesn't count. Well, and I think you also got to think behind the plate too. I mean, Kate with, with right. Kate Hunter being hurt so much last year, there was so much inconsistency. I mean, it was what Dane Leonard and Gary yeah. Garrick yeah. Ebel rotating behind the plate this year it's it's Cade Hunter and he's not just playing well behind the plate he's hitting well too so I, I think there's so many different attributes that factor into it but um but it's kind of crazy to sit back and think like this again this was the team that was picked dead last in the ACC Coastal and is has a chance this weekend to win the ACC Coastal yeah things break right and mm -hmm. they're number three in the country <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, it goes in the brain and it just bounces yeah. right back out. You know, not to, they're, they're the highest ranked team in the ACC. Yeah. You know, and that, that's awesome. And, this, and the ACC is good this year, yeah. by the way. Yeah. You know, do they have nine, 10 tournament teams, something like that? Yeah. Something projected like that. tournament teams. But if you, if you had told me, you know, Tech would be here at the beginning, of, at, the, at this point this season, where they're ranked, where they sit in the coastal, I would have told you, oh, that's a softball team. But. The softball team would have done that, but you know, I thought I thought Tech would. Well, sneak they did. In. They did softball. They did. did too. They did. They did. Um, but to for Tech to be, you know, where they are, you know, I thought they would sneak in as a tournament team this year. You know, they would they would do be a two or three seed, but you know, to you know be now, I think they're what the thir projected third national seed, just like the softball team. Yeah, I mean that that blows my mind. That, and 
And some of the players, you know, they thought they were going to be good. They thought they were going to be a tournament team. But I don't know if some of them thought, you know, we were going to be this good. Is it is it fragile at all? Like sometimes when you when you do better than you expected, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't have the mind of an elite athlete. But, but it does, it gets to be what I call rarefied air where you're like, ooh, there's a lot more below me than above me. There's only two teams above us now. You know, do you? It doesn't look fragile to me. They just keep winning. No, they just keep winning. I think they just they I mean they just have a ton of confidence. Like going in, they think they think your their nine can beat the other team's nine any yeah. day of the week. Yeah. When it's hard when when they're potentially the best hitting staff in the country. Yeah. I mean <laughs> that that's another like thing and I think it'll help check help carry tech in the ACC tournament next weekend. Um the regional super regionals, even if they get to the college world series that, that they can always, they always seem to find and come up with a hit when they need it. And, and it's not necessarily just Gavin cross. It's not just Nick Bittison. It's the whole nine or whoever they put in. I mean, I think, I think like what really sparked me last night was like watching Carson Jones hit a home run. This is a kid who's barely played this year comes in and hits a home run. Yeah. It's a meaningless Tuesday game against Kansas state, but that just kind of, kind of goes to show you that like you know all these guys you know whoever tech can put in the lineup can hit the ball really well well and maybe the way for me to think about it is you, you look at the series against louisville tech's ranked fifth louisville's ranked seventh and louisville's an excellent team but if you look and you know correct me if i get some of the details wrong sure louisville won eight to one on friday but then you look at the saturday and sunday games and tech gets up by two or three and louisville closes it to one tech gets a couple more louisville closes it to one and Tech won both games by one and two innings, I mm-hmm. think, right? And if you look at those games, didn't Louisville make a critical base running error in each of those two losses? I remember the su- Saturday game. Um, Saturday game, the runner on first, I think it was a tying run, or maybe it was to bring Louisville within a run back. Um, he tags up with either one one out or no outs in the inning. He tags up from first, and he was a pinch runner. Uh, I forget his name, but he, he, he tags up from first and tries to – um, break for second and Gavin Cross is out there, you know, not, it's pretty much in front of the wall and, you know, he makes his catch and then he's here and he, so he says he hears um, Jack Hurley and Nick Bettison yell tag, tag, tag. And so Gavin kind of like, not that he was confused, but, you know, maybe a little surprised that he tags up, but, and then he throws him out because the, the pinch runner, you know, overslid the bag. I think, I think he was going to beat it out, but he overslides the bag. Yeah, he did way overslide it, you know. And and then I, there was a somebody got thrown out the plate. I think on Sunday. Does that ring a I bell? Think, I think Cade Hunter. Um, I want to say he cut down someone stealing second. I think yeah. that might have been it. Yeah, but it, it was. So I guess my point is, you got a number five and number seven team in the country, and Tech's not the one making the critical mistakes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tech's not the Tech is the one getting the quote unquote insurance runs. Yeah. So. All right, so let's talk about Duke. They've got three games left. Duke, 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 and that's it. There's no more. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. And by the way, it's not Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And so um, so I looked it up. And so you look, and, and Duke's at the bottom of the Coastal. They're 22 and 29 overall, 10 and 17 in the ACC. No problem, right? <laughs> well, so I wrote, I wrote this sentence down. Virginia Tech has lost four in a row to Duke, seven of the last eight, and 16 of the last 21. Wow. Um, <laughs> It's so preposterous that I think I have to go double check it. I was looking at the history chart on Hokie Sports, and I'm pretty sure I was getting my red dots and green dots correct. There's a lot of red dots mm, yeah. in, in the series between between Tech and Duke. So, does it have anything to do with this year? Not really. No. I'm just saying, you know, this this is a team that, yeah, go out there and either sweep them or, you know, at the very least win the series or sweep them, you know. And so uh, without drilling down too much into the details, who's Miami playing this weekend? They're playing Notre Dame. Notre Dame. So Notre Dame's pretty good. Notre Dame is pretty good. And and basically if Tech and Notre Miami. Notre Dame leads the Atlantic. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So if Tech and Miami win the same number of games, then Miami wins the Coastal. Um, I can pull it up yes. right here. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah so let's see. For, for Tech to, I believe for Tech to win the Coastal, Miami my so, tech has to win one more game. So if Miami goes one and two, tech um, or Miami would need to go zero and three for, and tech would have to go one and two right. for tech to win the coastal. Um, if tech goes two and one, um, 
Miami could go zero and three or one and two for Tech to win, and then if Tech Tech has to win one one more more game game than Miami, Miami. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and I mean, is it is at Notre Dame or at Miami? It's at Miami. So Miami's playing at home, but Miami hasn't played well in the past few weeks. Yeah, at least ACC wise. Yeah, Yeah. and Notre Dame is. I mean, Tech beat them. But Notre Dame is really, really good. Yeah, that's so, good baseball. So, yeah. yeah. So, I'm sure he'll be keeping everybody updated on what's going on yeah, this yeah. week. All right. So, um, what do we know about broadcast for those games? Any clue? For the of course, tech, of course the, the tech softball regional is going to be going on at the same for time. For the tech games? I'm not quite sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. It just shows live audio. A lot of audio. Interesting. But, yeah, they're probably streaming. I well. think there might be one on the main network. There might yep. be one. You're right. The, the, thir- uh, the, the Thursday, Thursday game afternoon will be... game at 4 o'clock is on the ACC network. Yeah. But yeah. my guess is there won't be simply, and I know people get frustrated, but because they're, because Tech, Virginia Tech, Hokie Vision, they have to devote resources to softball. Yeah. Not just Virginia Tech's games, but all of the games. Right. Um, there won't be... Yeah, so... Eight, the other two games, the the Friday and Saturday games, are on the AC Network Extra. My guess is it's going to be a pass through, which single camera. in broadcast terms, it's a one camera, one camera show. They'll have they'll have an, an probably one announcer, you know. And they've for the pass throughs, they've put um, Evan's radio call over it. Yeah, or no, or okay. they they sync Evan on it. So. Yeah. All right. Oh, my gosh. An hour and 40 minutes. So appreciate you guys uh, helping out here and uh, a great job. Hopefully uh, in a couple of weeks we're, we're sitting here talking about Super Regional Tech Super softball <laughs> going to the co- right, Women's yeah. College World Series and Virginia Tech is getting ready to host a Super Regional. Yeah. Yeah. It's That makes me think of a whole other thing. But like I said, we've been 100 minutes at it. So let's uh, cut it off. Appreciate everybody uh, listening and uh, watching. And this has been Episode 238 of the Tech Sideline Podcast. Thanks for coming on, guys.